We've been in a flow of ministry, and tonight is not going to be any different. The Spirit of God, um, this afternoon where we were involved in, uh, in, in ministry as well, and receiving the word and encouraging people and people encouraging us, um, there's a very, very precious brother that uh, I, I don't see him often, but when I do see him, it's like <laughs> it's like a North Pole and a South Pole of a magnet. We just go wham, and we just and it's the spirit of God. And when we get together, it's the spirit of God so flows when we start operating because the prophetic there is is so powerful, and and we are humbled under that that the spirit of God just starts ministering. Uh, the one to the other. And I'm so grateful for this brother because this afternoon, some of the things that were in my spirit already, he just came and he emphasized that. He just came and he, he stood with me and I said, brother, you know what? The words that you've just spoken now, the Holy Spirit gave me basically the second last Wednesday of the month of August. And he confirmed it today. God always confirms his word. I want to say something here. Do you know that God does not have to do that? How many of you have ever thought about that? God does not have to do that because we are supposed to hear the first time God speaks is to hear what he is saying, listen to what he has just said, grab a hold of that and run with it. And I know many of you have also grown up, you were raised under parents uh, especially the uh, and I'm not I'm not saying the English did not do that, but the Afrikaans families, the Afrikaans parents. And our father, when he has spoken by his spirit, he has spoken and we can receive that. And and here is the thing is that the word again that came tonight, and after I flipped through some of the prophetic utterances that's been given on a Sunday night, and I, I want you to hear this tonight. Are you ready? Are you ready? And you may sit there in your house tonight, and you may you may have nodded your head now while, when I said that, and you, you may even have raised your hand and said, yes, I am ready. Because the readiness we are talking about is a readiness that whenever the Lord requires you so that he can work through you, that he need to be able to push your button and you're going to operate in the spirit. And I do believe that we have reached that stage right now in the equation of the spirit that you need to be so alert and so ready in the spirit that when the Lord requires your kingdom services, that you'll be ready to produce. And that is another word that the Lord has spoken for tonight. I kept getting, getting this word. And I just sense now in my spirit, there are some of you online tonight, and maybe if you are going to listen to this afterwards on YouTube and on social media, you are going to confirm this, that God has spoken to you about production. If you are online tonight, and the Lord has spoken to you about producing production in the spirit. We're talking about kingdom production, not the natural world. That is always an outflow of the spiritual uh, first. The, 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 the manifestation of that is in the natural, but we know the spiritual is always first. So has the Lord spoken to you about kingdom production, producing in and for the kingdom? Because this is really what he is saying tonight is, are you ready to produce? you know the Lord's got a sense of humor, right? You know that God will use some of the things that we see in the natural, and he'll take that, and he'll give us an understanding from the spiritual side so that we can grab a hold of that. And he gave me the three letters, A, P, P, app. Now we know about apps. <laughs> we, ons wat die ouwe generatie is, moes die goed leer, maar we know that the young people, they will say, do you have this app on your phone? Do you have that app on your phone? And they're all about the apps. And tonight, as I was sitting with this, I wasn't thinking about that. I was just writing down what the Spirit of God said. And I want to share this with you. He tonight said, each one of us, no, Leister, no, Fernandina, Stephen, Ken, Francois, Des, listen to this. The Spirit of God said tonight that we have 
allocated positions for production in the kingdom. I need to say that again. We have been allocated positions for production in the kingdom. Ooh, glory. I have, in all my years that I've been involved in ministry and in the prophetic, I have not seen or heard that particular phrase from the Spirit of God before. This is a first for me, that we have been allocated production points, production positions, production places in the kingdom of God. You are supposed to produce where you are. What God has downloaded to you in your spirit, whatever gifting you have received from the spirit of God, you need to now be ready to start operating in that. I'm just going to give you, you, if you've got a pen and paper there, just write this down. Remember, this is the flow of the spirit. In Romans chapter 12, from verse 3 onwards, you can actually read that whole chapter, uh, excuse me, from the beginning, right to up, uh, up to about verse 19, where it talks about the gifts, the motivational gifts, or I like to refer to those as foundational gifts in the kingdom of God. It talks about teaching. We've spoken about this in the prophetic before. Teaching, counseling, uh, uplifting, um, uh, the prophetic, giving, mercy, it has all of those seven gifts there. And all of you tonight who are online, if you are born again, you have at least one of those gifts that are operating in and through you. These many times are talents that we were, we were given as children as we were growing up. When you come into the kingdom, God says, thank you very much. I'll have that. I gave it, <laughs> I gave it to you in the first place. Anyway, I'll have that. I'm going to listen to this. I'm going to enlarge it. I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to make it more brighter for the kingdom so that these gifts can operate in and through you. So you've been allocated a specific position for production in the kingdom of God. That's why you have to flow and fulfill what the spirit of God has given you to do. You need to flow in it and you need to fulfill it. Please hear this tonight. Hear with your spirit what he is saying to you in your spirit so that your mind can come into alignment with your God-given assignment. Because the days we are in now are going to become a lot more challenging. I spoke to uh, some people this morning and I said, we need to remember that the, the, the things of the world are now it's being sped up. It is being expedited. We've spoken about this before, but it is increasing in speed. The world is becoming nervous in the sense that it wants to, it wants to impress its narrative upon the world system. And the kingdom of God, we will not be found for them to impress that upon us because <laughs> we already have the impression of Christ on the inside of us. And I say hallelujah to that tonight. Amen. We have the impression of the Christ in us. That is why we follow the shepherd whose voice we recognize and know. We do not listen to strange voices. We are going to have to, and this has come out in the past, the Holy Spirit is reinforcing some things tonight. He is definitely doing that. That you need to be in the place where you are going to be relentless in standing for the kingdom of God, and you are not going to return and, and go into default mode of the things of the world. This is the time that you need to block your ears to the things that are said in the world, and you need to get yourself into a strengthened position an empowered position that has come from the equipping of the spirit in order for you to start flowing to fulfill what you've been called to do. That was a big mouthful, but the spirit of God will make this clear to you as you listen to this perhaps again, because each one of you who signed in tonight, you didn't just do it because you wanted to listen to a man talk about the things of God in the prophetic. It's because you've got a hunger and the thirst of the righteousness and the things of the kingdom. Is that right tonight? You are sitting there listening to this because you've got a thirst and a hunger for the things of the kingdom. Amen? Absolutely. So where you are at right now, I'm asking you, and this is the challenge that is before you tonight. Are you fulfilling? Are you standing in that 
place of the application. Are you standing there? Are you standing in that place? God, to the measure by which you stand in the place of your allocation is going to be the measure by which he's going to grow you in that place. I'll repeat it. I sent somebody said, please, can you repeat that? To the measure that you are standing in the position and the place that's been allocated to you in your kingdom, that kingdom position and place where you are standing, to the measure that you are standing there is the measure by which he's going to expensially grow you to fulfill what he's called you to do from that position. So we are going to have to become again so, and I'm saying again, because the Holy Spirit is reiterating, again so kingdom-minded that the world becomes strangely dim to us. That the void, you know what's going to happen? The moment you sharpen your spiritual senses to the voices from the throne of God, and I'm talking about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the moment you are sharpened in your spiritual senses to hear the voice and the heart of your Father and the Holy Spirit and the Son of God, to that extent that that is enhanced, to that same measure will you become, uh, I want to say muted. That's the word, muted to the voices of the system of this world. Hallelujah. So when the system of the world is raising its voice, it's going to be muted to you because you're going to be so inclined to only hear from the throne of God. Yes, there are those who are going to misunderstand you because they are going to call you Miss Super Spiritual. It's okay. They are going to call you, oh, Mr. Super Spiritual. That's okay, because that's the place we are aiming at. We are aiming for that. When the Spirit of God spoke to me about this thing about production, production, producing in the kingdom, here's the wonderful thing. Whatever you sow in the kingdom has upon it the guarantee because of the law of first mention in the book of Genesis of a hundredfold return. And right now, we're not talking about finances. We're not talking about that. It does apply, but we don't talk about that. Now, what we are talking about is the gifting that you've received. As you sow through love from the gift that is given you by faith, that gift is going to be increased. And you know where he took me to? I was surprised. <laughs> he, he surprises me a lot he took me to Matthew and I, I, I want you to go there and uh, I want you to see this and it's a portion of scripture you are very familiar with and that's also okay because the spirit of God is going to show us something tonight from Matthew chapter 14 while I'm talking just turn there Matthew 14 while you are turning there I, I want to say this to you. And if you're writing notes, I think you've, if you've got shorthand, I'm sure you took a lot of notes already. But it's important to write these things down. Uh, I have a book that I write prophetic things down that the Spirit of God is saying to me because I don't want to lose it. It's too precious. It's like, it's like gold. It's way past golden nuggets. But in Matthew 14, 15, when you reach that place, put your finger there. But I want to say this. Kingdom focus gives you kingdom insight. Think about that. I'm not going to rush through this. Kingdom focus gives you kingdom insight. So do you have kingdom insight tonight? Are you in that place where in the kingdom of God, you are seeing things? You are hearing things of the kingdom and you are eager to go there just to do this journey. And it's called the journey of joy with him. Now, in, in, uh, in Matthew chapter, chapter 14, again, it's going to be familiar to you. And you've heard us talk about this before. When it's familiar to you, don't let the treasures of the word pass by you and say, well, I've read that before. My Bible even has 
the markings. I've even highlighted that. I've even written my notes there. Just leave that one side just for a moment and just listen to what the Spirit of God is saying. Matthew 14 and verse 15. When evening came, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote and a barren place, and the day is now over. Send the throngs away into the villages to buy food for themselves. The Spirit of God highlighted certain things to me here, and I want to relay that to you. The disciples here say that the place is remote and it's barren. What do you pick up in verse 15? It says here, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote and a barren place. It doesn't say Peter came. It doesn't say John came. It doesn't say uh, uh, um, Matthew came. It says the disciples. So guess what they were doing? <laughs> They were yakety yakety. They were talking about this, weren't they? The disciples came and said to him, this is a remote and a barren place. Send the people away. I want you to see the analogies that the Spirit of God is going to draw for us from this portion tonight. I haven't taught it like this before. I've preached from this portion of Scripture many times. Never like this, like tonight. Listen. And the day is now over. Send the throngs away to the villages. Steal a lace too, so they can buy food for themselves. Let them go and take care of themselves. Now watch. Jesus said, they don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. <laughs> you know what I see here? Is that, and, and I, I really do see this, that Jesus now, he knows that they've been talking. He knows that they were discussing this. He knows that they were I want to use the word concocting this whole thing. And he turns to them, of course, testing their faith, saying, but you do something for them. Come on, you, 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 you feed them. Can you imagine the look on their faces? They said to him, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. It wasn't even theirs. <laughs> we have it. No, disciples, you don't have it. It's a little boy's lunch. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds, watch what Jesus does. He ordered the crowds to recline on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and blessed and broke the loaves and handed the pieces, not to the people, to the disciples. You know what I love about this? Jesus, this I've taught before, Jesus took his focus of the situation which was a reality in the natural and he refocused when he looked up to heaven to focus on a kingdom reality which was going to bring about the miracle the throne was going to usher in the miracle through the spirit of God through Christ to the disciples to the people to give them something to eat Watch this. And he broke the loaves and he handed it to the disciples, the ones who were concocting. And the disciples gave them to the people. And they all ate and they were filled and satisfied. And they picked up 12 small hand baskets full of the broken pieces left over. I always say it's one basket for each unbelieving disciple. Because later on, you'll see the scripture say that the disciples only believe the miracle later on. What is the point here? What did we say we're talking about tonight in the prophetic is that this is production time. This is the time that we need to produce for the kingdom. What did Jesus teach his disciples in this exercise, this object lesson? What was he teaching the disciples? This is production time. Kingdom production is to flow through you, your hands into the lives of those who at that point cannot feed or help themselves. What do you see there? What is the analogy we are drawing from this tonight? Is that you are being raised, raised up right now to receive from the hands of Jesus to be in kingdom production, 
to then give it out to those who are in need. The gifting that God has given you is not for yourself. This is the time to start operating in it so that you can give it out to those who are hungry and thirsting after the kingdom of God because people out there are crying out for the kingdom. Have you noticed it? People out there, Mensa, Leicester, the people out there are desperate for the kingdom of God. They're desperate for the king of the kingdom of God. Have you noticed? I'm seeing it everywhere. People are down and out. If it's not physically, it's emotionally, and many of them obviously spiritually. So <laughs> you are a production point. You've been allocated that place. And God is relying on you to actually produce what he has placed on the inside of you. Then he took me to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. If you don't have your Bible, you can just write the reference down. I had fun with this, with the, with the Holy Spirit. Verse 10 of chapter 2 of Ephesians. For we are God's own handiwork. And I like what it says here. We are his workmanship. Do you know tonight that you are the workmanship of God? Which means that he is. I said to the folks this morning as well. Uh, there is a performer on the inside of you. He's constantly busy performing the work of the kingdom. In the Greek it's episteia. So. Where you are seated. There in your home. And you are listening to this. Don't you want to say this with me? I'm going to say it then. I'm going to say it again and you say it with me. I have the performer of the kingdom of God on the inside of me. Say it with me. I have the performer of the kingdom of God on the inside of me. It's the Holy Spirit. He is constantly wanting to perform the things of the kingdom in and through you. We are God's own handiwork, his workmanship. Recreated in Christ Jesus born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined and planned beforehand for us so that we can take paths which he prepared for us ahead of time. I, I took the scripture last week, Ephesians 2.10, and I just sat with that scripture. And I took my notepad and I just wrote and I wrote as the Spirit gave me a revelation on it. It says there that paths has been allocated to you even before time. It's ahead of time. Even before that time came, it's already prepared. And there are these paths that you need to walk in. Every single one of you tonight, there's a paikie wat die heilige gees al reeds vir jou uitgekap het. Jy moet in die paikie loop. There's a path that the Holy Spirit has already hewn out for such a beautiful English word, hewn out for you, for you to walk in and upon. It's already been given. Then there are so many people of God who say, am I on the right path? Am I doing the right thing? Um, what, what is my calling? What, I, what have I been called to do? Please take Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 and make it your own now. And in the Amplified Classic, it's going to help you a lot because it says there are paths that has been prepared for you personally that you need to walk in, that you should walk in them. That's like a logical conclusion. The Lord makes it clear to you. He says, there's a path. <laughs> now walk in it. What does walking in that path mean? What is it all about? Are you ready for this? Living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. The good life. I want to put a challenge out there. If I was talking to a group of business people now who were not born again, just hear, my, hear what I'm saying, hear, hear my heart tonight. Speaking to a group of business people, not born again, 
and I say to them, are you living the good life? What will their thinking be? And I, I know you said it there where you are seated. Money. Possessions. Wealth. Because when you speak to business people and talk about the good life, they believe the good life is living the good life, which is having lots of stuff. <laughs> kingdom people, if I say to kingdom people, like you are tonight online, and I say to you, are you living the good life? What does that mean? The good life, oh, come on now, is the life that is called the abundant life that God paid for through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that the Holy Spirit is living out from the inside of you, from the inside to the outside. In Ephesians chapter one, it says we've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In Colossians chapter two, verse six, it says, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, regulate your life in union with him, being conformed into the image of Christ. That's the good life. And here is the good life's outflow, is that when you live it for yourself, you cannot help but give it out. That's what God wants you to see tonight. Is that real life on the inside of you needs to be lived so that those whom you minister to, those whom you minister to, can receive it and receive it by faith. And receive it completely and fully. Amen and amen and amen. Is there anyone that would like to share tonight mm -hmm. from what I've shared now and what the Lord mm -hmm. has shown you, what you would like to perhaps add to? Maybe the Lord has given you um, just a word of what I said tonight. Mm -hmm. Maybe the Lord is confirming things in your spirit tonight. Mm -hmm. Won't you share it with us? And I'm going to open the microphone uh, for you to share. Amen. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I'm so excited about this. There is now the function for you to unmute yourself and you can share with us if the Lord has laid something upon your heart as we get into the close of tonight's session. Hi, you hi, Miss Lorraine. Hi, can you hear me? Okay, hi, Lorraine. Hi there, you. hi. Hi, hi you share hi. with us, Lorraine. Yeah, just very, very briefly, I actually have seen this in the spiritual realm that um, it's all based on God. It's like a perfect timing, but it's a perfect timing wave because the wave is for his children. So what I may be going through and what you may be going through and what um, someone else, um, um, you know, in the team, in the group, or as brothers and sisters in Christ go through, we go through it in a timing where there's that wave. So it took us through a time of preparation where we had gone through all the preparing but the wave is timely. For me, it's that timely focus of exactly what you've said. It's it's um and it happened and it's it's happening to to us as the prepared body. And and so that's what's so powerful for me because exactly as you speak and spoke those words, it's it's truly what I'm you know going through. And um just trying to understand all of this and put it together. And I realized that God's preparation and his timing is so beautiful and so perfect. Um, it's just um, sometimes you don't even know how to verbalize this, you know. So thank you. Amen. Amen, Lorraine. You know what is beautiful from what you said is that we are each in our individual channel with God. That word has come through a few times, Lorraine. Um, the past, I would say about the past five, six weeks, 
that the Lord has been dealing with, with me about that, that each one of us have that. It's like a kingdom line. It's like a kingdom channel that we are in. And, but we are running alongside one another. I'm in my channel and you're in yours, but I can just reach over and touch you. <laughs> I can reach over you right there, but I have my channel, which is my individual walk and journey of joy, which I referred to earlier on, which is a journey of joy. A lot of us don't always see that, but I can reach over and I can join hands with you and you reach across and you join hands with the other hands with the others. And we are this, we are this one team, but individual channels where the light that shines through us is going to enlighten our, that that song that says, take your candle and go light your world. Well, let's take the light of the Holy Spirit and go light your world. This is really what we are talking about this evening. And yes, we are in trying times. And unfortunately, and it is a reality, the, the things of the world out there is going to become darker. Um, it's going to, it's going to be, it's going to be challenging. There's going to be a lot of challenges, but the word that constantly came through, through the prophetic over the past couple of weeks, we are going to be relentless. We are going to be fearless uh, in, in the things of the kingdom of God. And uh, that's the way we're going to move forward. And I believe that many mouths, I just, I see all of these mouths opening now. And I don't know how many of you remember way back when we started, uh, the Lord showed us that picture that one night, it was right at the outset when we started this prophetic group on a Sunday night. Um, where I saw a picture of our spirit having a mouth that opened, where it wasn't the physical mouth, it was the mouth of the spirit that opened, but it was filled with fire. It was the fire of God speaking. I re that we're talking about, sure, guys, what's that now? Three, three, and it's more than three and a half years ago, um, where where that that fire came out from the inside of us. Um, so I, I believe that that's what we're talking about now. It's going to be in that place where uh, I said a, a word for somebody this morning that it's going to stop the mouths of lions. That's where we're going now. Amen. Is there anyone else? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's so exciting to know that we are in Rosh Hashanah now. Uh, I know a lot of you um, have already, you, you've already started um, studying this um, in on the Hebrew calendar, which is number 5784. Very, very, very significant. Um, and uh, the, the Yom Teruah, and we know the, the blast of the trumpets, because this is really what it's all about, is the blast of the trumpets, uh, the blast of the ram's horn, um, that it's actually called the day of blasting, the day of expression. Um, and hence now that the Lord showed us, and I mean, I didn't even link those two together before um, we started the session tonight. I just sense it in my spirit now is that the voice of fire that's going to speak from the um, from the very throne of God. Um, again, get ready, guys, get ready, because the kingdom is counting on us. Amen. If, if there's no one else, then uh, we are going to close. I'm going to close the session. Thank you, Jesus. You're on? Yes. Sorry, I'm just a bit late to reply. Um, I want to say something, just maybe a testimony. Um, it might not be major, but maybe it's encouraging for someone tonight. Um, yes. At this moment... I mean, in Jeffreys Bay, and it's been hectic with the storms and the waves. And where I'm located, it's uh, quite close. So the water has literally touched my veranda. Um, and last night, I woke up around half past three because it was high tide. And I mean, you wake up, the waves are so, you know, the, the sound is so loud. You can't, you wake up for, from it. And then um, I was like, oh, dear, <laughs> is it really going to come inside now? And then I just thought, while I was awake, what can I pray? And then I thought of Jesus and, and the disciples on the stormy ocean and when he calmed the storm and the sea. And um, I, I went to look up the uh, scriptures in the various uh, books. And then I thought maybe I should look at the specific words that Jesus uh, spoke. And the words were, peace, be still. 
And then I just repeated those words constantly and I eventually fell asleep. And I only woke up again like half past six in the morning. And I saw that the water had come and touched the veranda, but it had literally gone around my 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 veranda and and everyone else's because I was praying for myself, but also to everyone else that might be affected. And I do think there's significance in that. Um, I think so often we underestimate or we feel like, okay, prayers aren't answered or what difference would it make if I pray? But I think more often than we think, we intervene for situations and other people's by just being faithful and and to trust God with, with that prayer. Yeah, thanks. Amen. amen, amen. Thank you so much for sharing all the way from Jeffrey's Bay. Yeah, you know what? Corin sent me uh, um, a picture of Jeffrey's Bay with the way the water um, was. Uh, we love Jeffrey's Bay, by the way. Um, I, I still said I would like to go and write write my book there, but the waves, the way it was coming in there, it's it's absolutely. I mean, it's amazing to to, to see the the way the water is pushed up. Um, thank you for that reminder as well, because I wanted to pray for the people who had along the coastline who had suffered loss. You know, we we need to stand by the household of faith and God. This afternoon, when I thought about it, and I'm so glad this came up now for us to pray for them that we need to pray for the household of faith first. So we're going to pray for God's people first along the coastline who had suffered loss so that what had been suffered can be returned to them, that they can, um, again, receive from the hand of the Lord what was taken away. And uh, so let, let's pray for them tonight. Father, we bring all the people along the coastline who had suffered loss with this huge rise of the ocean. Father, we pray for God's household tonight, the household of faith, God's people who had suffered loss. And Father, we pray that what they had suffered, that will, it will be returned to them. Lord, that your mighty hand will provide for them in a supernatural way. And Father, that all that was damaged will be replaced. And Father, that they will receive better than that which was lost. Father, we thank you now also for uh, just saving the lives of those people. And Father, thank you for the words spoken from our sister right there, Father. And the, exactly what Jesus said, in peace be still. And Father, so accurately and so correctly and, and aptly tonight, she shared that so many times we, we forget what kind of power we carry in our mouth. The words from our mouth, from a heart of faith based on the word of God, expressed from the Holy Spirit through us, carries the same power that flowed from the mouth of Jesus. We don't always think about it or realize it. Hence, the word tonight towards the end was that we will even stop the mouths of lions. Now, that's a spiritual statement. And what that means is, and it always refers to a spiritual battle, the opposition that's coming against the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we can silence them. In the mighty name of Jesus, stand on your authority in the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Folks, you are valuable and precious. Enjoy Rosh Hashanah uh, to our Jewish friends and family and people who are out there. Um, we, we celebrate this time with you. I pray that in this week as we go into, it's going to be a big week that we will keep our eyes set on the kingdom of God, Isaiah 26, verse 3. Don't look to the left, guys. Don't look to the right. Don't listen to voices from, from platforms of the world because they are lying to us. Just listen to the voices of the kingdom. And Father, tonight, I pray that your people will be in a place where their hearts will be fertile soil for the seeds of the kingdom to find strong root and spring up and bring forth fruit and abundance. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you during this time. And may his smile be upon your life, your family, and his blessing upon your business, upon the work that you do. And may the hands of your the, the, the blessing from your hands also bless the lives of others in Jesus' name. And we all said. Amen. We love you. You are valuable and precious. Have an awesome week. God bless.